Hello crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I'm here with a card for the Newton's Nook Designs August release. This stamp set is called Newton Dreams of New York. Newton has been traveling in a few stamp sets and here is the latest one where he is headed to New York. And for today's card I wanted to create a spinner card and I'm going to focus more on the how I made the spinner part and less on some of the other elements of the card as I think that that's probably a little bit more unique. So I have my card base and then I have a white cardstock panel that's cut about a quarter to a half an inch smaller than my card front because this piece is going to hide the string that is part of the spinner. I also am going to need um, some circle dies. You could measure and cut circles as well, but if you have access to circle dies, that would um, be the easiest thing to do. So I'm going to tape the white card stock to my card base and then I'm going to pick a large circle die to cut through the card base or the card front and through that card stock so that they match up evenly and I can you know again at the end use it to hide the string that's involved. Then I want a smaller circle to be the spinner element in the card. And this smaller circle is where I'm going to put the Newtons, and I'm going to be coloring them with Prismacolor pencils a little bit later. So I first went just one size smaller, but then I decided to go two sizes smaller because I wanted you to be able to see through into the card a little bit, and I just used the circle die over my stamp set to make sure that Newton would still fit. I'm using the stitched circle stackables from MFT. I also cut a piece of pattern paper to be the size of the with um, to be about a quarter inch smaller than my card front and to have the same size circle as the card and as that white panel that's going on the inside. I wanted you to be able to see through into the card and the reason for that is because I wanted to create a little cityscape beside uh, sorry behind Newton something to add a little bit of interest because I was using such a uh, plain pattern on the front. So what I did was I took a pencil and I very lightly traced the circle so I would know what you would see in um, through and where I should do my stamping. Inside the Newton Dreams of New York stamp set there are two different buildings. Uh, I know one is the Empire State Building. I don't want to say what the other one is because I'm not sure and I don't want to sound silly. but um, I'm pretty sure they're both famous distinct buildings in New York City, so you probably wouldn't have multiples of them, but here we go. <laughs> so I'm stamping a little city scene by just making a little pattern of the buildings, and I'm using that circle as my guide. I'm using VersaFine ink so that I get nice impressions the first time. I find that to be the best ink for great first time impressions, no misty needed, um, but it doesn't work as well with all coloring mediums. I also cut another small stitched circle out of um, coordinating pattern paper to stamp the sentiment that you see off to the left. New York is always a good idea. And now I'm going to show you just a brief bit of coloring on Newton. Um, I enjoy working with my Prismacolor pencils because they have a little bit more texture to them. The nice thing about Copics is how smooth they blend and you can definitely add a bit of texture to them with using dots or making your own stripes on your critters and um, there's techniques you can use like the Copic blender to give some texture but the colored pencils just have this very easy look of fur if um, you use them and so that's what I wanted to do for Newton today I'm just using a couple of different grays. I use the warm grays, just like with my Copics. I prefer the warm grays for an for most animals. And so I'm going to do an all-over coat of my lightest color and then go to my darkest color and start building up a little bit more to create a bit of a shadow. I find that it's helpful to keep your tip really sharp and that way you can use lighter pressure and still start to fill an area and over time I build up the pressure that I use as I'm more sure that it's my final layer um, and to create a more blended effect I apply a bit more pressure on the last layer than I do on the layers before that 
And so I just make his face look rounded by adding some shadows on the left and right side. There is not a scene, so you know there's no need for a light source in particular, but he does look a little bit more interesting if he has that rounded effect. When coloring with the prismas, it tends to dull the lines you color over so his eyes uh, don't appear as dark as they once were when I stamped, so I tend to just trace over those with a black pen. Now I wanted to show you the assembly of the spinner card. And I'm going to put that sentiment on the front and I just need to make sure that when I place my spinner in it's not going to bump into it. So I just confirmed that before I start making my spinner. I have the two Newtons and they are have some adhesive on the back because I'm going to place the string on the back side of one of the stitched panels in the center and then I'm going to place the other stitch circle on top and basically create a string with Newton in the center. And I tried to, on the first go, make sure that both Newton's heads were facing the same way, but when I turn it over here, you see I got it a little bit crooked. This tape is from Elizabeth Crafts, and I used it because it is such a strong tape, and so I knew that even though this card was going to be touched a lot, it would hold up to that. However, that made pulling it apart and making a mistake a little bit trickier. Luckily, I was able to save it and I was able to pull them apart. Uh, another tip if you have trouble pulling them apart, some people say that I'm um, trying to get some dental floss in between them because it has that waxy bit is helpful. So you can always try that if you have two pieces that you can't quite pull apart. So once I have Newton on the string and he has the two different Newtons facing opposite each other and adhered down nicely and made sure that the string is secure, I'm going to center him inside the circle and then tape down the strings. I used sewing thread here and I would not recommend sewing thread because I felt like it stretched a lot over time. I would recommend something a little bit thicker. At first I thought thinner would be better to make it uh, sort of less noticeable. However, in hindsight and after spinning the card a few times, I think something a little bit thicker, like maybe a couple threads of embroidery floss, maybe not the whole thing, but you can separate embroidery floss. That might be a little bit thicker and stand up a little bit more and not stretch out. So I taped down the ends of the string and trimmed it off. And now I want to cover this. I don't want them when they open the card to see the tape there. It is white tape, but you know, it doesn't look great. And so I'm taking that white cardstock panel that I originally created and cut through the card base with, and I'm just lining it up so that it covers that and has a little bit of a mat around it as well. And that's pretty much going to finish off the card, but I just want to show you what it would look like to set it up for spinning. And I use that little pencil line guide. Because I was using the VersaFine ink, it takes a while to dry, so I gave it some time before I erased it. If you go right in and erase it immediately, you'll probably smear the ink. And I also used a black pen to fix up some of my stamped lines as necessary, where I didn't quite get enough pressure and I'm going to place that sentiment. This pattern paper, as simple as it is, is from the Lawn Fawn Beachside collection, I believe. So, when you're ready to give your spinner card, you want to basically wind it up, so that way when they open it, it will spin. So you just want to turn it and turn it and turn it till you get some pressure, and then place it down and into the envelope, so that way when they take it out and open the card, it will spin, and you kind of saw how that works there. So that is it for my card today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you are interested in more crafting and card making tutorials, be sure to subscribe to my channel. This is part of the Newton's Nook Designs blog hop, so be sure to check the link in the video description below to join us on the blog hop and enter for your chance to win. And I will list all of the supplies in the video description below. Thanks for watching. Bye.